We're here in Belle Plaine, Minnesota. We're about to head down the road and pick up our load. I'm not even too sure what it is yet, but we'll find out when we get there. This is a, uh, I don't really know what it is. It's a rock divider, rock separator, rocks, something to do with rocks. I'm taking it from this gravel pit here in Belle Plaine, Minnesota to a gravel pit in St. Malo, Manitoba. They said it's about 10,000 pounds. There's the crane that loaded me over there. He's just cleaning up. I'm gonna get this thing secured and we'll be on our way. There's a pipe on the other side yet that I had to belly wrap in here. These are the tarps that uh, Caden had put on that last load of lumber, bringing that back to the yard. Got this weird metal piece that's part of it back here. Got one strap there, I'm gonna put another one there yet. Tie that down. And this is the pipe here. This is a loose pipe, right? So what I'm doing is I'm belly wrapping it in here and sucking it against this right down here against that foot so that it's pinned against that and down and it won't be able to move that way. And this is just an extra piece up here. I'll probably just throw like a short strap just over this thing so it doesn't flap around up there. Okay, I got some work to do. I'm going to put you guys in the truck here. I want to get going. It's already 1 p.m. Or close to it. It's got to be. I don't know exactly what time it is right now. But uh, that sun doesn't like us very much this time of year. And it's just begging to go back down below that horizon. And I'd like to be moving before then. All right. Okay. Let's go. Got everything, I've double, triple checked everything. We gotta get up this hill here without getting stuck. We're loaded now, so we uh, shouldn't have a problem. When I was maneuvering around in this pit down here, uh, I was empty. <laughs> Almost got stuck a few times, even in this little bit of snow. When I don't have a load on my trailer, I don't have very much traction at all. Get a little bit of momentum and just hold that momentum all the way up the hill. Don't stop on the hill. You don't gotta go wicked fast, but you gotta go fast enough, right? In 200 meters, turn left onto 295th Avenue. I wonder if this is the exit or is that the exit? I came in here. I don't know if this is an entrance only or what. It's an exit today. There's no sign saying anything, so. Continue on Minnesota River Valley Scenic Byway for eight kilometers.
have arrived at your destination. On the right side, Pilot Travel Center. Proceed to the highlighted route. to pick up some of my paperwork here in Alexandria, Minnesota at the pilot. Uh, they faxed over some paperwork from the office that I would need for the border. So that was waiting for me here. Picked that up. I think you have to pay, what, 50 cents a sheet? That's what it seemed like. I had seven pages and it costed me three, $3.76 US. Uh, which is kind of silly, right? But I guess they gotta get back the cost of the paper and ink somehow. But, so we got my paperwork, I had a shower here, gave myself a haircut, cleaned myself up. Now we've got to go up into the cold. There is a deep freeze settling into Manitoba tonight. I almost just want to stay here in Alexandria because it's not going to get so cold here. But uh, it's too far away, I have to go the rest of the way. I'm going to wait till we get back into Canada to fuel there. And uh, I'm going to go somewhere close to... Uh, St. Malo and sleep there. I might even sleep at St. Agath at the Flying J. That's probably what I'll do. Or even in Morris. I'll find somewhere. But I gotta go fuel up tonight first. I wanna go to bed with full tanks of fuel. It's supposed to go down to minus 32 degrees Celsius. Minus 43 with the wind chill last I checked. If you're wondering what minus 43 is in Fahrenheit, it's minus 43. Celsius and Fahrenheit meet up at about minus 40, so it, it's cold. It's going to be a cold one tonight. I'm going to have to button up the winter front on the grill when we stop. And uh, stay warm. <laughs> we all knew it was coming sooner or later. The polar vortex is here. Okay. let's go I may not need to go all the way to I know like the Flying J in St. Adolph's a little out of the way but I, I have to make sure that tonight that I sleep at a location that has a 24-hour truck stop or facility where I can go into just in case if the worst happens an old blue gets a little tired and doesn't want to run through the night I need somewhere warm where I can go inside I don't want to stop at just uh, a parking lot somewhere a gravel lot where there's no facilities so We gotta be careful. I'll wait for this guy. Nope, he's taking too long. I'm going. Not today, buddy. I am nice every other day. Today it's gonna be cold. Not as nice when it's cold.
Off we go. It's not so cold here yet. It's only minus four degrees Celsius here. It's around uh, 25 Fahrenheit, but it's gonna drop down quick once we get into North Dakota onto the I-29 and start heading north. It's gonna change quickly. That's why I thought it'd be nice to stay here, but this is too long of a drive to do tomorrow morning. I have to keep going. Otherwise, I, I won't have as far as I, I won't be able to get as far tomorrow, right? Because I'm hoping I can get reloaded after I get this thing off my trailer. And I want to keep going. I really don't like the deep freeze. Like, I don't mind winter. It's tolerable, we can deal with it, right? As long as the snow is not on the road, we'll deal with it. It's the really cold, like below minus 25 is just, it's a little ridiculous and a little over the top. I really think it was a design flaw when whoever designed the earth designed it. I don't think that that was supposed to happen, but who knows? Coming over there. Five more hours to go. Karen always dings like that, like a doorbell, whenever there's a turn or something coming coming up ahead that I should pay attention to. If you're wondering why it's always dinging like a doorbell. She's very annoying, but I like to leave her volume on because if I turn it off, I forget to turn it back on. And then I get lost in my thoughts and music and stuff and I miss my turn. All right, bud. All right, bud. I know you don't want to go too fast around here. You don't want to tip, but come on there. There we go. It's kind of a sharp corner. I don't like on ramps like this. It's very hard to get up to speed then, because now this is this is the only space we have right here to get up to highway speed. And there's no way we can do that. So we don't really have a choice and right now we're uh, entering traffic at 35 miles an hour which can be very dangerous and disruptive to the flow of traffic. If they would have had the ramp on this side, you'd have the whole, like a whole half mile to gain speed, right? So that when you hit the highway, you're already doing like at least 55, 60 mile an hour. That's how I would design on ramps anyways, if I was in charge, but as we've all been over and been through, I am not in charge. Things would be very different if I was in charge. I don't know if it'd all be better, but it'd be different. I think it'd be better. Hey, bud, watch where you're going. Man, you just about drove right off the edge there. You see that? You awake? Crossing border, entering North Dakota. Be legendary. It's starting to get cold. We're at minus 15 Celsius now. And we're halfway down to where, well, almost halfway down to where it's going to be tonight back home. And it's very, very beautiful minus 32 Celsius.
we made it back. I fueled up in St. Nagath, Manitoba. Uh, I put about $1,400 worth of fuel in. 663 liters or 175 US gallons. I didn't go over all the numbers on video there. It's so cold outside. It's minus 45 with the wind chill outside that door right now. So, I brought the truck here to the shop for night. And uh, we're going to park it in here overnight and then go deliver that load tomorrow. It's just much better that way. If I, if I park the truck at the Flying J or somewhere, you know, like I was planning on, in this weather, you don't shut your truck off at night. You're not going to get started in the morning. Minus 45, you, you are going to leave that truck running. So you're wasting a lot of fuel, right? Wear and tear on the engine. It's very hard on a diesel engine to idle. So this way, I brought it here. or I'll, It's just outside there right now. I'm going to bring it in right away. Uh, this way I can turn it off for my 10 hours or however long I'm going to be here uh, instead of idling it the whole time. And then we go deliver that load tomorrow. So thanks for joining me and hanging out with me today. We made it safe and sound. We're nice and warm. I got the heater going on the other side of the pickup there. We're going to be all right. I don't like these cold winter days, so I'm very thankful that we have a nice warm spot to bring Old Blue. Old Blue is, uh, you know, our bread and butter. So we've got to treat her good. And if at all possible, always bring her home for night and uh, put it in the shop here so that it doesn't have to sit out in the cold. That's why we have this shop for specifically days like this. Thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. There will be a new video tomorrow. Come and hang out with me as we deliver that freight. It, it was a big temperature change from uh, where we picked that freight up to here. It's crazy. It's only uh, like 500 miles, but total different, total different atmosphere, literally. <laughs> ah, fun times. Gotta love it.